so guys welcome back to my channel my name is florence welcome back to first james channel so today we're going to be making a meat top and also a palazzo trouser that has pockets so if this is your first time here like share subscribe and if you've always been following my channel thank you very much for following you're welcome so i'm going to show you guys how i styled it and step by step how i achieve this top that i'm wearing now as you can see and not a palazzo trouser Okay, stay with me and let's get it. Okay guys, let's start by measuring our shoulder. On the one inch slope and impute your arm o measurement. After which I'm going to be measuring our neck, giving the wideness for three and the depth for three. That's for the back. I'm going to be um, drafting the front and back neck on this same pattern. Right for the front depth, I'm going to be giving three and a half. I'm going to be measuring three and a half inches for our front depth. Why right for the back depth, I'm going to be measuring three. Why? Right? Because I'm going to be making the neck wide, the front and the back, so I can easily wear and take it off whenever I want. So draw down your shoulder slope to put my bust measurement without any allowance. Why? Because I'm using a stretchy fabric. So if you know you're not using a stretchy fabric, add zipper allowance. But if you know you are using a stretchy fabric, you don't need that. So divide your arm over by two and connect the lines. The can see the first arm or curve I'm, I'm drawing now is for the back going in with one inch I'm gonna curve the front arm all to also meet the back arm all like I said I'm not giving any allowance for this top because the fabric is very stretchy okay I am not giving any allowance for this after then you measure your shoulder to your waist shoulder to your waist mine is 16 so whatever your shoulder to waist is you impute that then Impute your waist measurement without any allowance. I'm not giving any. Impute your waist measurement. After impute your, your waist measurement, you're going to be measuring from your waist to your crouch measurements. After measuring from your waist to your crouch, from the from your waist measurement again, you're going to be coming down with three inches. After coming down with 3 inches, you're going to also impute a waist measurement on that 3 inches line that you just imputed and add 1 inch. Okay, 1 inch. Then connect the lines like you see me doing. neck i'm going to be cutting the first neckline i drew okay the top neckline i'll cut that out and also cut the first arm hole meaning the back arm hole i'm going to use that piece to cut for the back then after which i'm going to be coming back with a pattern to cut out 
the right front arm hole and also the right front neckline okay while cutting on your fabric don't forget the fabric should be your fabric should be on fold So I'm going to be cutting the back pattern first on my fabric before coming back to correct my pattern and to cut the right um, pattern for the front. So here's my sleeve. I've cut out my sleeve and I also cut out two, I also cut out three strap for the piping of my neck and also the piping of um, the pant-like part of the top. I'm going to be piping the both side. Part of the top. I'm going to be piping the both side. The best thing for this that I would advise you to do is just to pipe it. Piping is the best method to cover up all the rough edges for this lycra fabric. Okay guys. And I'm so sorry guys, I thought my phone was recording so I didn't know that it didn't capture the beginning of what I was talking about in this video. So what I did first was to place my tape after that half inch at the top and I measured down my crouch line. Otherwise your crouch line you put it there. After I got those lines, what I did was I imputed my crouch measurement on that first long line you're seeing. I imputed my crouch measurement plus one inch allowance. Otherwise, your crouch measurement to divide it by two. Measure it there. After you measure it there, the next the next line you're seeing is your hip line. So after measuring that, I went upwards from my crouch line to get. I went I went upwards with two and a half inches from my crouch line to get my hip line. So you're going to be imputing your hip measurement now. Measure your hip divided by four and impute it on that second line that went upwards with two and a half. Okay, impute it there. Then you connect the line through a straight line. After which in between the hip and the crouch line like you see me do i'm going to be going inwards with one inch slant slantly just watch me closely i'm measuring in the middle point one inch after measuring one inch you connect the line from your crouch to your hip line okay after which i'm going to be imputing my waist measurement so place your tip there on the waist point and measure your waist your waist is divided by four for the dart measurements we're going to be using four centimeter to get the allowance for our dart and also add half inch for your allowance also add half inch for the allowance after your four centimeter dart allowance So to get your that point is when you put nipple divided by two minus four 
then that four i'm going to be dividing with four by two to get my two dots i'm having two dots for this trouser to get the two dots as soon as one dot i'm going to be using the four but since it's two dots i'm going to be dividing that four by two to get two to get two inches for each I prefer using centimeter part for my darts and inches because it helps me get a proper dart. And I'm going to be coming down for the length of my darts with 10 centimeter also. From the half an inch points that I give as my guiding point, down to the end of your crouch line then divide it by two to get the middle point so whatever you have there that's what you're going to be measuring to get the middle point in the end of your trouser then you rule the straight line so after reading the straight line measure from your waist to your knee from my waist to my knee is 23 inches so i'm going to be measuring from my waist to my knee for this part for After measuring your waist to your knee, you're going to be imputing your round knee measurement, meaning you measure your knee, how wide you want the trouser to be on your knee. Whatever you have for your knee, divide it by 4. So if your knee is 15, 15 divided by 4. After dividing it by 4, whatever you have, you measure it at the right part of your knee and also at the left part of your knee very wide measurement to have my knee that's what i'm going to also be using for my ankle measurements half an inch on my curve that curve crouch line that's going to be my hemming allowance for the crouch part of the trouser okay then reach for the front part i'm going to be measuring one and a half inches from the waist like you see me do not at the um not at the hip part at the crouch part from the beginning from the from the beginning of the waist i'm going to be coming down one and a half inches and i'm going to be slanting the line just watch me closely, just follow me as I go, okay? Slant it one and a half, then slant the line. So guys, why cut why cutting at the unwanted part for this front pattern? Please, that slant line that we made, that 1.5 inches slant line that we made, don't cut it out here because we're still going to use it to draft the back of the pant. Place the front and the back fabric, crouch line for the back, you measure two and a half inches on the crouch line for the back. So after adding two and a half inches for the crouch line, every other allowance we're going to be adding now is two two inches. Two inches for the knee, two inches down to the ankle, just two inches down. You know for the front piece we didn't add any allowance at all. That's okay because we have allowance at the back. It's going to be enough for us to stitch 
and I have a proper fitting for the trouser. So I have two inches for the knee, two inches for the ankle, then two and a half inches for the crouch. Then connect your lines, guys. For the waistline, you go upwards for the back piece with one inch. After going upwards with one inch, you impute your waist measurements, meaning you're going to be measuring, starting your measurement from the beginning part of the trouser, slant width to meet the one inch. So whatever you have as your waist measurements, you impute it plus three inches. So after marking your waist, right waist measurement, add extra three inches allowance. We are going to be cross-checking what we've done, if it's correct or not. So we are going to be measuring the hip point. Like you see me do, measure for the front piece, measure from the beginning point to the ending point of the hip. Whatever you have, you note it down. Then also measure from the back piece, beginning of the hip to the end of the hip. Whatever you have there, you mark it down. So for the front piece, I have 9.2 times 2 is going to give you 18.4. Why for the back, I have 12.5 times 2 and it's going to give me 25. Okay, so I'm going to be plusing the 18.4 and the 25, both of them together to give me 43.4. I'm going to be minusing my hip measurement. So my hip is 37 inches. So 37 inches minus 43.4, I have 6.4. So now I'm on the safe side. So whatever you whatever you calculate, if you have 6, 6.2, 7.2, whatever you have above 6, you're on the safe side. But when you finish calculating and you have below 6, meaning there's a problem. If you follow through what I'm doing correctly, you wouldn't have any mistake on your calculation and any mistake on your measurement. So watch closely, please. And if you have any problem, after measuring and you see that you have 5.8, 5.9, 5 5.7, on that back curve that we did, that back crouch curve that we curved, you can just extend it further and curve another one again. Like curve another one further to the end of the fabric. So after calculating again, you have your proper and your correct measurements okay guys so follow through correctly just watch me closely what i'm doing and you get it right then you notch it not your knee and not your ankle okay so So after that, for the front piece, remember that slant line that I told you guys not to cut out after drawing, okay? Now we're going to be cutting it out. You are really cutting out like a main pan trouser pocket. We're going to be coming down with 7 inches. We're going to be measuring 3 inches for the waist. Then Rule a slant line from the three we measured on the waist to the six or seven that we measured as the length. Just really slant line. Then from that dot, like you see me do, just draw a curve, curve line, like just draw a curve line to the hip point. Curve it to the hip point. So this is now our pocket bag. And for this pocket, we're having two pocket bag. The first one, that three inches is going to be slashed out. While the second one, the three inches is going to be maintained the way it is. You're not cutting it out, okay? So that's why we're having two in line. First one, three inches is going off. Second one, the three inches is will be intact. 
just wash me as I'm doing mine. I'm using my pen to trace the line so I can easily trace and cut out the pocket. Like just use your pen to trace. Since I'm not using a pattern paper to cut this trouser and I'm using on the main fabric. So let's not begin to waste fabric and create problem for our trousers. So what I'm doing now, just use your pen to trace through like I'm doing. And what I also did was I fold in extra another extra fabric a different fabric i fold in was um nine inches for the length six for the wideness After which I'm going to be placing it at the wrong part of the fabric, meaning the inner part of the fabric. And that same pin I use in holding and tracing the line I drew, I'm going to be using that same pin to hold the front piece of the trouser onto the pocket bag, okay? Like I like I like I'm doing now. After pinning everything I'm pinning at the moment, I'm going to be cutting at the three inches, meaning meaning the main trouser now I'm going to be cutting at three inches, and one part of the back pocket bag I'm also going to be cutting three inches. So after cutting that last slant line, we are going to be covering the pockets. I don't, we're not going to be leaving any four corner the way it is, but if you want to leave yours like that, it's fine. But I advise you to just give the pocket a fitting. So we're going to be covering the pocket, cover it, and cut it out. So now time to join all the piece together. So for the um, top, I've piped the neck and I've also piped the um, hip way, the hip part of it, meaning the crush part. I've piped everywhere I need to pipe, pipe for this top. The next thing I'm doing, I'm going to be joining the shoulder. After joining the shoulder, this is how it is. I'm going to be attaching the sleeve now for this top. After I'm attaching the sleeve, I'm going to be joining the both side with half inch or one inch. Depending on how stretchy your fabric is, if your fabric is extremely stretchy, you can join with one inch. Or if you know it's not that stretchy, you can join with half an inch. So this is how it is. Like it's it's really really simple making this top. After joining every part I need to join together, I'm going to be inputting my pressing button because since it's like a um, swimming suit, I'm going to be inputting my pressing button to hold the damn part under our crouch together. So this is how a pressing button is. I'm going to be stationing it at the upper part and the damn part of our top. So now for the trousers, I'm going to be joining the dart, join the dart for the back and join to join the dart for the front. We're going to be fixing the pocket. You know we have two pocket bags. Don't forget the first pocket bag that has the minus three inches. We are going to be placing it on the fabric to stitch it together, right side facing right side. Okay. After stitching it together, you flip it over to the inner part, like you take it inwards, then you're holding down with your pin so you can flip out. Mm -hmm. 
they measure three inches inwards don't forget that three inches that we subtracted from the front pocket bag and the fabric and the main trouser fabric we're going to be imputing that three inches on the back pocket bag. okay to measure in three inches on the pocket bag that has a three inches allowance then place that three inches point to meet the point of the trouser the slant point of the trouser pin it down together Pin the up part, then pin the round inner part pocket bag, then you hold it down also at the point. Just watch me closely and just pin everywhere you have to pin the one pin pin in mind, okay? After pinning it, you do it also for the other side. Then you stitch the upper part on the waist to hold it firm. Then the inner pocket bag that we pin together, just sew a curve line inwards to hold the pocket firm. Okay, after which you can remove your pins. The next thing we are doing now, guys, is since we've done fixing the pocket, we've done joining our darts, the boat that I can see is looking very, very beautiful because, because I love my pants having two darts. Not all do, but I want this one having to that. So after which, after which, um, we're going to be placing the back, one piece of the back and one piece of the front, placing the right side facing right side together, and stitch from the waist through to the hip to the knee down to your ankle. You stitch the side down, okay. Stitch the side down. After stitching the side down for the boat piece, okay. So we are going to be having two different pieces. So you place the two different pieces together, right side facing right side, that's why I'm doing it now. Place it together, then you join your front crouch line. So after joining, you place your tape after the half inch that you've joined to get the right measurement for your waist. So measure your waist now after joining the front crouch line, measure your waist. Whatever your waist is, draw a curved line from that waist point. No matter the allowance you have on your waist after measuring your waist, it is normal. You don't need to be scared. Of. What I'm going to be doing now is to join the under part together. That's why I'm doing mine. Measuring five inches downwards and open that point. Either you're opening for the right or you're opening for the left because I'm going to be putting a side zipper on this trouser. But if you know that you are you're on the slim side, please go down with seven inches. Right? If you know that you are on the average size or a bigger size, you can go down with ten. At least ten is okay for any size. Okay, after opening, what I did was I'm not I'm going to be putting a band for this trouser. So I'm going to be measuring my the wideness of the band. I'm going to be having two inches wideness. But since I'm going to be placing it on fold, I'm going to be measuring four inches. Okay, since I'm going to be placing it on fold, measure four inches for the wideness and um, measure your waist round first before measuring the length. Well, if your length, if your waist is 37, you measure 37 or 38 to be on the safe side for the length of the band why for the wideness i don't like my band too big so i'm taking four folded in to get two but if you want it bigger you can go as as far as adding more um allowance to the wideness of your band after which i i had to iron on my band a gum stay i'm not using the hard i'm using the soft one for my gum stay so i ironed it on, on my gum stay and i ironed it flat after which i'm going to be be fixing my band just the way you see me do I notched the middle of the band and I started from the ones I started from the the side of the trouser that that isn't that I didn't make any opening on I started from there and I pinned it through round so after pinning or after sewing you fold in with half an inch or so to top stitch to have a very neat band but I'm folding outwards of my trouser and not inwards so I started the first sewing from the inner part of the trouser to fold outward the half inch okay so after which after you've done that you fix your zip this is how it's looking and this is the outcome of my top and my trouser